Here's your paper, Mr. Selden. Oh, thanks. Draw a bunch of kids. Where are they going? Camp. Just across the lake from your place. Get your luggage on the truck and we'll hike the camp. Go ahead. Just look at it. Not a worry in the world. Great to be a kid. Now, boys, I'd like to call on our old friend and camp director, Dr. Stevens. <laughs> Men of Birch Lake, welcome. To those of you who are newcomers, just let me say that our motto always has been and always will be a healthy mind in a healthy body. This God-given country that you see around you is ours to enjoy. This is your camp, your summer, your vacation. And I want you to make the most of it. Just one thing more. The big trip this summer will start a week earlier than usual. And boys, I have a grand surprise for you. Instead of a hike this year, we are going to go on horseback. One night of this trip will be spent in Canada. Now, I know that you'd all like to get out of your city clothes as soon as possible, so I won't take up any more of your time. Good luck, and go to it! Chunky, you pick the best bed. Okay, fellas, this is mine. Better be careful, bud, or you're gonna run out of films. I wouldn't disturb him. A man's home is his castle. Maybe he's a lady. Hotel Lido, Venice. Savoy Hotel, Madrid. Alexandra Hotel, Berlin. Clarendon Hotel, London, Ant. Where'd you get the trunk, kid? It's my mother. But is she an explorer? No, my mother's a singer. Mm. Is your father an actor, too? He was, but he's been dead for four years. Where's your mother acting now? No place. She doesn't sing on the stage anymore. Swim it, kid! Put a wiggle on, gang. Everyone down to lake. Come on, hurry up. Hey, anybody got an extra belt? Nope, not I. I haven't got any. Me neither. Why don't you tighten a knot? Who 
Remember, boys, no playing tricks in the water. And no one swims past the float. All right? Yeah! All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yes? Oh, just a moment, please. Mr. Selden! Mr. Selden! The phone, sir. Answer it, will you, Joseph? But I did, sir. It's for you. Long distance. If it's from New York, I'm not in. It's Mr. Wagner, sir. I'm out. This is the fifth time he's called today, and for the tenth time, I've said you're out. Mr. Wagner, but I tell you, I don't know, upon my word. Mr. Selden, he insists on knowing. Where shall I say you are? I wonder his text answers me, anything you like. I tell Selden that I must know without further delay when I can have the first act. Mr. Selden, he wants to know when he can have at least the first act of the operator. Just as soon as I get an idea. But don't tell him that. Mr. Selden. He says it is scheduled for an early fall opening, not for Christmas. Tell me the stop before we begin it. I'll my option if He wants to know what you've been doing for the last three months. Eating, sleeping, drinking, discussing fish, cows, horses, fertilizer, and building a new back porch. Yes, sir. Let me finish my operetta. I think I'll open Yes, sir. Yes, I'll tell him. I beg your pardon, sir, but I think you'll find your problem practically solved if you'll accept my help. Well, thank you, Joseph. What do you suggest? Plug or spinner? Spin oh, no, no, no. I wasn't speaking of fishing, sir. I refer to your difficulty in getting down to work. You see, Mr. Selden, as I said before... Yes, Joseph, as you said before, you didn't place your services with me just to open doors and wait on table, but someday you hope to help create great music. That's right, sir. Unfortunately, Joseph... All the great music has already been written. Oh. You and I were born too late. Now, really, sir. Well, last night I had a new inspiration. The rhymes just kept running through my head. I, I, I couldn't sleep. Have you a light, Joseph? Yes, sir. Now, sir, as I was saying... Joseph, I have a better idea. You do the composing, and I'll do the buttling. Hello, Brennan. How's tricks, Murata? The trick is uh, they're okay. But the song was uh... How's your operetta coming along, pal? That's the trouble with writing a hit like your last one. You've got your work cut out now to try and top it. I'm afraid so. Well, good luck. What do you have that we know got? The producer. And the rent. But I asked. Is ever write anything so good as I'm glad I'm mad about you? No, Moretta, that was a great number. Even if we were the only ones that ever heard it. How are you, gentlemen? Now, now, we're not interested in collaborating with you. I come to talk business. You boys write good songs. Oh, we're too anemic to blush. You've been up here in this music colony all summer. And a part of the spring. I have put my finger on your difficulty. Oh. You write the wrong kind of song. Uh, we know that, teacher. Write songs with me, gentlemen. And I assure you, our efforts will be crowned with success. success. Fame and success. How many songs have you had on Broadway? Gentlemen, I've been unfortunate. The world accepts me only as a butler when I have the soul of a poet. with a new kind of fish. How do you lose them? Lost the belt. Catch. Thanks. <laughs> Have a safety pick? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I'm afraid not. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this will fix you up. Gee, Frank. I'm the thing. Well. Get anything? Sure. Let's see. <laughs> Kind of small, aren't they? Well, I've only been fishing for a little while. <laughs> hey, it's keen up here, isn't it? I'll say. Up at the boys' camp? Yes, sir. What's your name? Chip. Chip, eh? Chip what? Chip Wizard. What's yours? Johnny. Johnny what? Johnny Seldon. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Seldon. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Winters. <laughs> hey, you over there? Come back here. All right, all right, all right. I'm coming. Gee, I forgot all about swimming past the float. Oh, I'll come across and fetch it. I'd like to see your camp. Okay, slow. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Pee Wee. Oh, uh, here's your license. I was going to bring it over as soon as they let me cross the lake. <laughs> Thanks. I shan't be wanting for a while. I'm down to work at last. What? During vacation time? No, this isn't vacation time for me, Pee Wee. I've got a dig. Oh, you're a farmer. Well, in a way, yes. I, uh, I dig for tunes and, uh, and grow music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you sing like Jim. <laughs> oh, so it was you who sang last night. Yes, sir. I wish I could sing like Chip. Oh, you ought to hear my mother sing. How do, How do you, you compose? Red and butter make a wish. Go <laughs> <laughs> on, Mr. Zumpella. How do you compose? Well, first I get an inspiration. Then I sit down to the piano, wait for the music to come to a boil inside me, then let it bubble all over the keys. <laughs> See, you say funny things, just like my mother writes. Listen. <laughs> After leaving you at the train, I walked home through the park, pretending it was the lovely country you were going to. And suddenly I remembered something I forgot to tell you about all these years you've been growing up. It's about the little things in life. That a bluebird in flight is such a quick moment of beauty that you must look sharp to catch the blue flash. That's a very beautiful liturgy. Your mother has imagination. Is the letter full of thoughts like that? Oh, really, may I? Learn every song and concerto that a brook or waterfall makes, or that is played by the little animals splashing in the still lake. You know, fellows, I can feel something beginning to boil. See you later. very cheerful about it. I wouldn't either. Somebody was coming up to spoil your fun. What? Oh, I don't mean my mother. Look who's coming along. Who's Mr. May? He's the one who talked my mother into giving up singing. Oh. 
He doesn't like singing, eh? It isn't that. He just doesn't want my mother on the stage. He's always saying it's for our own good. My mother says he's very reliable and substantial. Gee, I wish I could think he was swell. I guess my mother thinks he is. I don't know. Why does he have to come up here anyway? He doesn't like any of the things kids do. I bet he never went fishing in his whole life. He's different. From us, I mean. You know something, Mr. Salvin? What, Chip? There won't be any more letters. I was just thinking of that, too. Listen, boys. The musical world has had father so, mother so, also brother so. What? What is it the musical world has never had? A sister song, and I have it. Listen to this lyric. Would it distract you too much if I were to cut my throat while you're wailing? No, not at all. Oh, no, please. I want you to meet my sister, mister. You'd make a peach of a pear. Peach of a pear. <laughs> Rather neat. And you'd realize after you kissed her, mister, that she had done her share. I know you'd love my sister, mister. My sister's name is Susie. I'm having a little trouble rhyming Susie. Joseph. Didn't you say the musical world had never had a sister song? Never. You told the truth. very busy. He must not be disturbed today. Oh, gee, I wanted to ask him to go on a treasure hunt with us. You've bothered him enough. He's away behind in his work, and he can't spare a moment now. All right. Come on, gang. Hello, fellas. Hi, 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 Hi. Where are you going? I tell him up lookout on an expedition. And you're leaving me out? Want to come along? What sort of expedition is this? Treasure hunt. Oh, it's got to be some natural thing in nature that's the treasure. It's nothing for its intrinsic value, sir. Animal, vegetable, mineral, or just plain inanimate. Ha, <laughs> Oh, come on in for a minute. I haven't got time. Yeah. Oh, come on in. Just for a minute. You can go in if you want to. But we got to get back in time for swimming. Okay, I'll catch up with you, fellas. Mr. Joseph, yes. hold it a minute, will you? Thanks a lot. I wish you'd let me see it when the prints are finished. Sure. If you do, I'll autograph it for you. Okay. Something they have at camp every year. 
Get you the palace ice cream. Here's my little father a treasure. But it can't be anything you make. You've got to find it. Do you think I ought to give something to Mr. Mays? Oh, I'll just find something for my mother first. I know something you can give your mother. You do? Mm-hmm. If you can guess what it is, you can have it. What is it? It's something you can give and still have. It's something you can give to everybody and still have it. You can carry it with you wherever you go. It's good when you're glad and when you're sad. Now, what is it? Glad, have, give, have. Give up? I give up. Make a wish. You and I that this lovely dream of ours will never die. It's a song. And you're leaning right on it. Hey, it's nice. Did you just write it? Mm hmm? I'll make a wish on my shoulder each time the moon appears. That when we grow older, Try it. You work in ship's letters. How do you do, Jack? I'm very charmed to meet you, Mrs. Winters. Uh, don't tire your mother, Charles. Oh, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Chunky, meet my mother. Glad to know you, Chunky. Hello, Mrs. Winters. Come on, Mother. Now I'm going to take you up the hill. And there you can see the whole music colony. You see that house behind that big tree? That's Mr. Selfie. And Brennan is. They've been helping us with our big show. He went and used to see his mother. They're composers too. They're not like Mr. Seldon. What do you mean they're not like Mr. Seldon? You know what Mr. Seldon said about music? He said it's got to come to a boil inside of you. And then it bubbles over. At first this operetta wouldn't boil at all. But now it's doing fine. Boiled and bubbled up to the finish of the second act. Yes, Mr. Mays, we have short talks on ethics. One each week. Once a week? You think that's sufficient? <laughs> well, it isn't a simple matter to make the subject of ethics both useful and pleasant to small boys. Oh, I see. Sometimes she says some of the funniest things, but you aren't sure whether you're supposed to laugh or not. For instance? Well, the other day he said something about having so many selves, and the one he liked best he called Johnny. He says he hasn't liked himself since he became John. I must meet this interesting friend of yours, Chip. You bet you will.
Charles. Yes, sir. Where is your mother? She put the heel off her shoe and Mr. Selden had a roar across the lake. And we sure had fun. Fun? What did you do that was funny? Oh, we walked and laughed and well, we just had fun. You and this Mr. Selden seem to have struck up quite a friendship. Yes, sir. Excuse me, I've got to get ready for lunch. You may not know it, but you wrote it for me. I did? Yes, I got the idea from the things you wrote in your letters to Chip. Oh, yes. Speaking of letters. Oh, please forgive me. But you have to find the story before you can write one. And is your alphabet all about not catching cold and being careful about wet shoes? <laughs> no. No, it's about a beautiful lady. High up in the hills. It's an imaginary land. No matter how hard you look, you can't find it. The lady? She wanders through the hills, singing a song. And whoever hears this song cannot resist it. They must follow her. The song cannot be heard by everybody. Only those who are pure of heart can see and hear her. That means little children. Mm -hmm. So all the little children follow her into the hills. A kind of Lady Pipe Piper of Hamlet. Go on. But there comes a time when she wants them to return and spread the happiness she has taught them among the mad crowd in the valley below. But she can't release them. And the spell cannot be broken until the right man comes to claim the lady. Well, that won't be easy. No, but uh, there is a man in the valley below who is trying to recapture his youth. He's lost it. Poor man. Yes, I felt sorry for him two at times. Then a terrible thing happened. The wrong man goes to claim the lady. There always has to be an obstacle in a love story, you know. And then? Well, the last act isn't written yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. Now, the lady's shoe. You may not know it, but I'm the second best shoemaker in the world. Why didn't we think of that before? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Careful now. Thanks a lot for a lovely afternoon. And I hope your operetta will be a huge success. Cross your fingers. Make a wish. <laughs> Oh, I went down south, go to see my south, sing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. My Sally and my spunky girl sing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. Fare thee well, fare thee well, fare thee well, my fairy say. For I'm going to Louisiana, go to see my Louisiana, sing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. invested one dollar and sixty-five cents in a stage production? Mm-hmm. What assurance have you that it's going to be good? Well, I know all the songs, don't I? And they're swell. 
Have you got anything in writing? Do I know? Oh, come out of it. They're always talking about Southern show. It's a wonder you wouldn't take a little more interest in our show. Well, what's the matter with our show? We're all set, and everybody knows their part. Guys, students came today. I saw them, and they're swell. Oh, come on, Wagner. Why don't you stay over? The kids are putting on their annual show tonight. You'll have a great time. Well, that's the trouble with you. You've been having too much of a good time. It's lucky I came up here or I wouldn't have received these two acts. <laughs> you like them, don't you? Frankly, John, I think it's the finest piece of work you've ever turned out. And if the third act holds up... Uh, give me a little idea what it is. No, I'm not going to let you hear it until it's finished. Oh. <laughs> hey, mister! You better get started if you want to make that train. All right, all right. You know, John... That show has a great part for Pauline Mammon. Oh, I, um, I had someone else in mind. Who? Miss Irene Winters. Who's Irene Winters? She has the most glorious voice you've ever heard, and she's very beautiful. Oh. Well, we'll see. You're not worrying about your investment, are you? I'll tell you how I feel about that. I'll buy your half interest right now. No, sir. I'm in for my half, as we agreed. Well, <laughs> you know show business, John. It's risky. If this thing doesn't go, you'll lose your shirt. Well, it's my shirt, isn't it? Now, don't hold me up on that last act. I'm going into rehearsal right away. Now, now, you will do a little work tonight, won't you? No, not tonight. I'm going across to the boys' show. Well, keep up the good work. So long. So long. Okay. <laughs> to shove in so late. I was detained making some important provisions for your future. My future? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. You will in time. Perhaps, my dear, you could be persuaded to use this now.
once a little bit to win the toss. So we scratched his noodle, like a yak a doodle, shuffled on to the What are you kids trying to do? Well, we thought if we treat the horses, they'd get the like it. Well, that's a good idea. Dr. Stevens. Yes. Can I ride that horse tomorrow? Oh, why not? Oh, boy. Can I ride the other one? Why, certainly. Take your pick. What's his name? Well, that's the uh, Lady Jane. Gee, I'm going to bring Lady Jane an apple after dinner. <laughs> do you boys know what you're going to do after dinner? You're going to bed. You've got a hard day ahead of you tomorrow. Yes, yes sir. All right, yes, then, run sir. along. <laughs> and don't forget, boys, I want you all to sleep not later than 8 o'clock. It's the same as it is here. Just think, fellas, we're going to a foreign country. Do you hear what Dr. Stevens says? We're going to pitch camp at Moosehead Lake and get a mess of trout for supper. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. Let's get back to sleep. Come on, fellas, we got to dig up some worms. How come you didn't go to Selden's party tonight? I thought you and him were such great pals. Well, if you must know, on my console, Chip decided to retire early. I told Wagner that I'd found my prima donna. But I've given up all thought of the stage. I'm making a new life for Chip and myself. And Mr. Mays represents that new life? Yes. Mr. Mays represents that new life. But I mean, you have talent. Don't throw it away. Johnny Seldon! <laughs> Well, what shall it be? Won't you please play something from your office? Yes, yes, please. please. All right. But not because I wrote it, only because Miss Irene Winters has consented to sing it. Oh. Oh. Life will become a new morning. 
evening, Mr. Selden, and I especially enjoyed Miss Withers singing. Grand evening, John. Good night. Good night. It was lovely. Thank you so very much. I think it's the loveliest song I ever heard. It was written for you. Oh, can't you see how necessary you are? Good night, Selden. Must you go? Oh, it's late, I'm afraid. Oh, yes, it's very late. Joseph! Joseph, I feel marvelous. Do you, Sid? How do you feel? I feel like Helen Morgan. I'll get you a drink. What's it be? Thank you, sir. I'm not very thirsty. Oh, don't worry. It's on the house. Straight over soda. Straight, sir. Then straight it shall be. Now, Joseph, before drinking, I want your cold, critical judgment. A gorgeous oh, voice. What charm, what poise. What quality. <sighs> Miss Selden, would you mind, please? Oh, please. yes, pardon me. <clears throat> Joseph, Sir. remind me to give you a raise. Oh, thank you. Your voice is always beautiful. Irene, I hope all this silly applause isn't good. All this pleasant excitement is only part of it. You know that. You know too much about it to be taken in again, I hope. You know, I've been patient about all this, but I may as well speak frankly. Either you mean it when you say that you're through with this kind of life, or you don't. Either you intend to go through with our marriage, or you don't. Which is it, Irene? Walter, let's leave in the morning. Fine. You know, I think we'd better take Chip with us. Why, Chip? Oh, he's been up here long enough. Besides, it'd be rather nice to have him with us for the rest of the summer. You know, I've hardly had a chance to get to know the boy. Yes, but, but he has his heart set on that trip. Oh, it means so much to him, and... Oh, I can make it up to him in a thousand different ways. In fact, I'd rather like the chance to. Well, Irene, do we all leave together in the morning? Yes. We'll leave in the morning. <laughs> Shall I tell him, sir? But you don't know where I am, but I shan't be at rehearsals. But I don't care if I never hear a note of this music again. And about the prima donna. Tell him I lost her.
Well, what is it? Head or tail? Tail. No breaker, please. All right, you win. What are you going to have? The yolk. Then. Have you got a cup of coffee in your pocket? No, no. Please, gentlemen, I'm serious. So you see, the key to fame. That's a terrible title. That's worse than you missed to miss to my sister. This is the third act of Mr. Selden's operetta. I'm taking this to New York. To what? If you will collaborate with me, we can improve on Mr. Selden's work. Oh, Selden would love that. No, Mr. Selden doesn't want to hear a note of this music again. He's gone away, maybe for a long time. But what's the matter? He don't like his own music? Mr. Selden's had a great tragedy in his life. I can't speak of it now. Well, don't you think he'll come back? Definitely not before the show opens. Gentlemen, we can interpolate our own song. I don't want nobody to interpolate the word my music. No, 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 no. He means put our song in the show. But why no mean what he said? So what do you think? Well, what have we got to lose? And everything to gain. The lad is right. The key to fame. <laughs> It's not good, boys. That's got two colors over two horses. This separate has got to be all together. One horse. Oh, hold your horses. Listen, if we get two of our songs in this third act, we're all set. Here's an excellent opportunity for our first song. Where? Boys, where? we're making musical history. Let's call for the last man in the dining car pays the check. Mays is a very elegant and important man. I know, but, but do you think he's a, a swell guy? One never speaks of an important man like Mr. Mays as being a swell guy. Well, the kid up at camp has got a stepfather. He said he turned out all right. Well, he's a male pilot, though. Well, yes, yes. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. About what? About my friend, Mr. Seldon. He needs to write swell music. He was regular. Did I tell you I've got a dollar and 65 cents for his show? Only about 20 times. It's called music in my heart. Oh, I know that, too. I'm going to see that you go to the show with us opening night. Gee, I bet it'll be great. Woe is me. Woe is me. What's the matter? Can't you take it? You got us into this. It's all your fault. I didn't realize this would be so serious. Poor Mr. Selden. 
What are we going to do? You can't get songs on Broadway, pal, without a little trouble. I don't want my songs on Broadway anymore. Well, this is a fine time to talk about that now. Don't you realize you have an obligation? You got us into this and you can't run out on us now, Joseph. What are we going to do about the third act, Mr. Wagner? I've got $25,000 worth of costumes and a hundred kids on my hands. And I've got all the kids up in the mountains. But how am I going to get them out again? Keep on postponing rehearsals. And what about the scenery? And what about the libretto? And the music? And the author? If I could only get hold of him, I could tell you. Mr. Wagner. Oh, don't bother me. This is important. Well, who's it from? Your prima donna. What does she want? She regrets exceedingly, but she can't wait any longer. She's accepted another engagement. Hmm. Well, that about washes us up. What am I going to do about Selden? Everything he owns in the world is invested in this show, and I don't even know where he is. I think you've gone as far as you can with Selden. It's about time you thought of yourself. I'll have to. Oh, if I only had some idea what the last act is about. Who is it? Come in. Where are I put the stuff? Well, today being Thursday, the kitchen's day off. Put it anywhere you want to. It's going to be a great third act. Now, come on, the music. Come on, come on, Harry. Now I remember. This is where the children walk down the mountain. I got a better idea. Why have them walk? Let's put in an escalator. It'll be something new, novel, extraordinary. Escalator. Escalator what? You know, one of those moving stairs. Gentlemen. We. And we'll have the principals on pogo sticks run away to elope in kitty cars. That's so great. All the children in the escas, I mean, in the moving staircase, uh, traveling with my music. What's wrong with that? I'm beginning to see what you mean. Only it's so different from Mr. Selden's conception. It's fantastic. It's so symbolic. It's not. Afternoon, Joe. Hello, Mr. Mays. They're lovely. I'm so glad you like them. It's a good thing you didn't go into Selden's operetta, Irene. There's a little item here on the drama page of this morning's paper I thought might perhaps interest you. Young Selden's operetta, scheduled to open at the Lyceum, is reported in difficulties. The prima donna, Miss Pauline Manners, has walked out on the show. Can John Selden be slipping? Does that mean that there's somebody that doesn't like Mr. Selden's music? You can see for yourself, my dear, how wise you were. Stay out of it. I heard a future song of Margarita liked it. I don't think it would have made a bit of difference if you had sung it. Must you always sing? Now, do you know what Mr. Mays read in the paper? Yes. Looks like you've lost your dollar and sixty-five cents, Chip. Oh, I don't care about that. But I think my mother's kind of sorry she didn't go in it. I think she is too, Chip. But I bet if Mr. Self asked her again, she'd do it. Yes. But if your mother ever went into that show, Mr. Mays would never marry her. 
He wouldn't. Caught the cat. I would like to see Mr. Selwyn. So would everybody else. Wagner Productions. Just a moment, please. I'll connect you. No more kids than either. But I want to see Mr. Selwyn. You don't say so. Go on, run along. Excuse me. Could you please tell me where I could find Mr. Selwyn? Ask the information first. Wagner a little while ago. And now the grand aria. The gloom in my heart is your being away. The gloom in my heart would depart if you stay. The sun is shining clear if you are only near. Stars, the moon seem bright. As you're in sight, your smile takes the gloom far away. Music in my heart. Selden should have written the last act first. Are you Mr. Wagner? Thank goodness, no. But that's not... No more children. Something's wrong. Looks like it. Did you hear what Grant said? But that's not Mr. Selton's music. Can I see Mr. Wagner? Will you quit annoying me? But that's not Mr. Selton's music. So what? Now get out of here and quit bothering everybody. You know, Mrs. Conover, he's very busy. He'll call you back. Yes, young man, what can I do for you? Can I see Mr. Wagner? It's very important. Have you an appointment? No, ma'am, but I'm sorry. All the children's parts have been cut. But I just gotta see Mr. Wagner, please. You're in sight. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Seldom oh, no. must be insane. You call that music? No. Uh, I can explain. You've explained enough. Now get out! Get out! Get out and stay out! What's the matter? You know, like the music? This is terrible. This is terrible. I told you it wasn't so easy to get a song on Broadway. That's a goodbye, Mr. Mr. My sister. Please, won't you let me in just for a minute? I'm sorry, you can't go in. I thought I told you to go home. Come on, outside. But they were playing the wrong music. Come on. I tell you, there's something wrong. Miss Parker, tell Grant everything's finished. Take what he can out of the record. Post a notice, the show's canceled. You mean the show was closed? Well, it's closed. <laughs> Oh. 
Miss Winters, you're both going to help me out, aren't you? Mr. Wagner. I'm sorry, but we've given you all the help that we can. Miss Winters, this is going to be a great triumph for you. I'm sure of it. And mother, Mr. Selden wanted you to sing it. I mean, I think you know exactly how I feel about this. But wasn't this written for you? Make up your mind, I remember.
have you been? Anywhere, everywhere. I don't know. What does it matter? When I heard that you were going to sing, I couldn't stay away. I had to come back. Wonderful, Irene. Wagner told me everything. Hey, you call me. 